Hey guys and welcome to another video tutorial where we're going over connecting to a database and in our case we're using MongoDB. So because of this you're going to need MongoDB installed on your system. There's a ton of articles out there teaching you how to install it on any type of system, Windows, Mac, Linux. So just follow them. If you have any questions feel free to post them in the issues on this GitHub repository and I'll try help out. But if not, yeah, just stay tuned and hope you enjoy the tutorial. Hey guys, so in the last lesson, we just left off with a simple server with a controller layout where we have routes, controllers, and everything's laid out nicely and the server's coming together now. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to connect to a database and in our case, we're using MongoDB. So as mentioned at the start of the tutorial, you're going to need MongoDB installed on your system. But once you've done that, you can run this command called mongod or mongod, not really sure how to pronounce that one. But when you run it, you should see that your server is now booting up and listening. And you can see here it's on port 27017. And that's important for later on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to kind of figure out where we're going to connect to the database. Normally, I use a connected database in this app.listen after there's been no error, just because it kind of makes sense to, for me to have it that way. Um, so if the app boots up with no issues, then we can connect to the database. So just like the sort of roots logic here, I don't want to have the connect script in here because, well, it's just going to, for one, bog down this, this file. And two, I might need to change it. And it's just going to be easier if everything to do with the database is in one file than worrying about if I've sort of like required another dependency up here and that sort of stuff. So we're going to decide what we're going to, where we're going to call this file by just requiring, um, I guess we're going to have a utils folder. Um, and this is going to be all of our utilities. So we might have one for errors for better error handling and validation for better validation on post requests. But for now, we'll just make one called DB. So we require that, and at the moment that doesn't exist, so our server's probably failing in the background right now. Uh, but we're just going to create a new folder, call it db, um, in fact, call it utils, like so. And then within that, make a new folder called db and a new file called index.js. So this index.js is the first file read when you require this folder. Um, if this wasn't called index, I don't think this would work. Um, just requiring the folder like this, you'd probably have to put in like the file name here. But because it is index, we can just require the folder, which is, is a little bit nicer, I believe. Um, just looks a bit neater. Okay, so if we go into this index.js, we need to have a way of connecting to the database. And for that, we're going to use a dependency called mongoose. And this is like the most commonly used one. So that's why I'm using it for this tutorial. There may be arguments out there that are slightly better ones, but Mongoose does the job for me and I haven't had any issues with it yet. So how we get that is we just do npm install mongoose. And by the way, you don't need to do the dash dash save to just save it to your dependencies anymore. Um, it turns out the npm made an update where the save is kind of the default behavior. So if we just run that, that will install and you can see that it will automatically get added to here once it's done installing, like so. Okay, so the next thing we do is we need to require that. So mongoose is equal to require mongoose, like so. And then once we've done that, okay, so this bit is optional. Um, I like to use promises whenever I can with JavaScript. I find them better for chaining and just like a promise to all. And it's got a lot of like helpful functionality to it. Uh, we can make a video about going over promises and everything they can sort of do and the power of promises. Uh, but for now, I guess you just have to trust me that they're slightly better, but it is opinion based. So feel free to use the like traditional callback functions. But how we set up mongoose promises is we just do mongoose.promise and we set it to the global.promise. And you can use like a bluebird promise system, which might be slightly better, but for now, like the sort of built-in promise is kind of 
all we need. So once we've done that, we need to then connect to the database. And you probably could guess this, but you just do dot .connect. Didn't mean to do that. You just do dot .connect like that. And once we've done that, we just need to pass in a variable. And normally you use like a URI, so like a sort of like a structured like a URL. And for this, we're going to use, we're going to set it in our sort of environment variables, but just because you're obviously going to have a different database on production than development. So this is going to change depending on your environment. So we're just going to create a new variable called mongodb underscore URI. And if by the way, you're using, for example, Heroku to host this and you attach a mongodb service onto your server, this will automatically be added to your server configuration. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that if you're using that, but if not, then it's pretty simple to understand a Structure of the URI. So you first have this MongoDB protocol like this and it's kind of you can think of it like just instead of HTTP you just use MongoDB and Then once we've done that you'd normally have for example a username and Then password and then you'd have like the at symbol and then you'd have like your server sort of thing like this, but we don't really need to do that because we're running locally, so there's not going to be username and password, and the server is just localhost. So we can just type in localhost like that. Now we do need to put in the port, which I mentioned earlier, uh, this sort of 27017. This is usually the port used for MongoDB. Um, I haven't really seen it change much, uh, so it's probably going to be the same for you. And then we do a forward slash, and then this is going to be the database name. So I'm just going to call it API, but you'd probably call it like whatever your project name is. Okay, so once we have this MongoDB URI, we just need to throw it in here. And just like in the server.js where we wanted to import the environment and the port, we do exactly the same thing. So we just do process.env.mongodb underscore URI. Now if we do this, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a, a depreciation error or warning because they've changed the sort of URL parser on the URI. So in the options in the options parameter of this connect function, we can actually add a value called use new URL parser and set that to true. And that will get rid of that depreciation warning that Mongo spits out at you. Okay, so once we've done that, we're just gonna create a variable called connection which is equal to the mongoose.connection and this is going to be basically a variable which is a which is called back from this connect function and this is where the promises come into play so this is actually going to be a promise because of this line here and we can do connection dot then and then it's going to return a db uh, either object or instance not really sure and then we want to catch the errors if there are any, like so. So if the connection was successful, it's going to be on this line here. And if the connection was unsuccessful, it's going to be on this line here. So I might just console.log uh, the connection to the database was successful, like so, and return the database. And then maybe we can say console.log there was an error connecting to the database. And then we can just spit out the error that's given back. Um, in this instance, normally I kind of check which error it is. And if it's like a timeout error, I might automatically try to reconnect to the database and things like that. But I think we're going to cover things like this in our error handling tutorial, where we're going to go over some better error handling and maybe some more services that you can use for, for example, like production, you might want to use Sentry, for example. Okay, so once we have that, I'm pretty sure that's all we need to do to connect to the database. And as you can see, we're requiring it here. So yeah, let's check the terminal. And let's do npm start. And hopefully we'll see we've connected to the database. The connection to the database was successful. Cool. So that was it for this tutorial. Uh, super basic. The next tutorial when we go over making um, models, 
then that's going to be a lot better because we can manipulate the database by adding stuff and collecting stuff and going over some basic validation for what gets added to the database and things like that. So stay tuned for them tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Uh, subscribe to upcoming videos by using the bell and I hope you have a great day. See you later.